Hello, welcome to my student support system. In today's class, we are going to discuss a very important topic that is anaphylaxis or anaphylactic reaction. Or in local language, we can say that it is allergic, severe allergic reaction or reaction to a drug. So all are same. This lecture is in English and if you want to study in Hindi, just click on i button and you will get link of Hindi lecture or you can directly visit to channel my student support system. Okay, let us start. What is anaphylaxis? Anaphylaxis is a clinical response to an immediate immunological reaction that is also known as type 1 hypersensitivity between a specific antigen and an antibody. The reaction results from a rapid release of IgE mediated chemicals which can induce a severe life-threatening allergic reaction. Pathophysiology of anaphylaxis means what happens actually in our body during anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis occurs as a result of an interaction of a foreign antigen with a specific IgE antibodies found on the surface of membranes of mast cells and peripheral blood basophils. Due to this interaction, bioactive chemicals are released in the body such as histamine, prostaglandins and inflammatory leukotains. Presence of these chemicals results in vascular permeability changes, flushing, urticaria, angioedema, hypertension, uh, sorry, hypotension and bronchoconstriction. Apart from this, smooth muscle spasm, bronchospasm, mucosal edema and inflammation and increased capillary permeability may also occur. What are the causes of anaphylactic reactions? Presence of allergens causes anaphylaxis. These allergens may be grouped as food such as peanuts, tree nuts, walnuts, pecans, cashews, almonds, shellfish like shrimp, lobster, crab, fish, milk, egg, soya, wheat, anything may lead to allergy. Some medications also such as antibiotics, especially penicillin and sulfa antibiotics, allopurinol, radio contrast agents, anesthetic agents like lidocaine, procaine, some vaccines, hormones like insulin, vasopressin, adrenocorticotropic hormones, aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They can uh, induce anaphylactic reactions. Other pharmacoceutical or biological agents such as animal serums like tetanus toxoid, snake venom, antitoxins, rabies antitoxins, antigens used in skin testing, etc. Then uh, some insect stings like uh, bees, wasps, hornets, yellow jacket, ants including fire ants, they can also result in anaphylaxis and then latex uh, such as medical devices, non-medical products uh, containing uh, latex, gloves, they can also induce allergies. What happens during anaphylaxis means what are the clinical manifestations of anaphylaxis? According to clinical manifestations, anaphylactic reactions may be categorized in three categories or three groups, mild systemic reactions, moderate systemic reactions and severe systematic reactions. Mild systemic reaction consists of peripheral tingling and a sensation of warmth possibly accompanied by a sensation of fullness in the mouth and throat. Nasal congestion, periorbital swelling, pruritus, sneezing and tearing of the eyes. 
can also be expected. And the onset of these symptoms begins within first two hours of the exposure. Moderate systemic reactions include flushing, warmth, anxiety, and slight dyspnea and itching in addition to the milder symptoms that we just studied. Onset of the symptom is same, means two hours, within two hours of the exposure. Next is severe systemic reactions which may lead to anaphylactic shock. This may include the symptoms of both mild and moderate systemic reactions, but the onset is very rapid. These symptoms progress rapidly into bronchospasm, laryngeal edema, severe dyspnea, cyanosis, and hypotension, dysphagia, abdominal cramping, vomiting, diarrhea, seizures, cardiac arrest, and coma may follow. What management can be done in case of anaphylaxis? Anaphylaxis management is very important because if we are not able to manage anaphylaxis timely, death may occur. So, management depends upon the severity of the anaphylactic reaction. Initially, respiratory and cardiovascular functions are evaluated. If the patient is in cardiac arrest, then cardiopulmonary resuscitation should be started. Oxygen is provided in high concentration during the cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Epinephrine or adrenaline injection in a 1 raised to 1000 dilution is administered subcutaneously or IM as per institution's guideline in upper extremity or thigh. A continuous IV infusion is started. Antihistamine and corticosteroids may also be administered to prevent a reoccurrence of the episode or to treat urticaria. Apart from this, continuous monitoring should be there and if within 5 minutes no response is there, then again we will repeat the epinephrine, same dose, same route. And patient is transferred as early as possible to the higher center where ICU is available so that in case of need, ICU care can be provided. So this is all about anaphylaxis that you need to know. For such latest updated videos, you can subscribe the channel, you can like Facebook page and for making your notes, you can visit mynursingstudents.blogspot.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and join Facebook group Nursing Notes. Thank you. Have a nice day.